Today's topic is Light and Frost. Sounds a little medieval, but it has nothing to do with Game of Thrones. It works sort of like this. If you have a surface, in this case we're going to use metal, and a liquid, in this case we'll use water, and they come into contact, so long as the metal is significantly past the boiling point of the water, where the water contacts the metal, the liquid will immediately vaporize and leave behind a barrier of water vapor. This sort of allows the droplet to wiggle back and forth on the metal as though it didn't have friction. Now, everybody's seen this, especially if you're cooking. You get a pan really hot, you want to test out how it works, you pour some water on, and it zooms around the pan, it doesn't stick to the metal. It kind of looks like mercury. You can wiggle it around, sometimes it makes that zing noise. So what we're going to do is I've got this old kiln my dad had. We're going to take a wide variety of metals and heat them up well past the boiling point temperature of water. And this kiln gets well past 1400 Celsius or 2552 degrees Fahrenheit. That is essentially the melt point for your average jewelry glass, something you can find in a ring or on a bracelet, stuff like that. This also is significantly hotter than the melt point for aluminum or brass or copper, or gold, silver, and a whole variety of other metals. Now this kiln gets a lot hotter than 1400 Celsius. Premise here is, if we drop water onto a hot surface and it forms that barrier and can move around freely, then if we take a superheated metal and dunk it into water, the water touching the metal will immediately vaporize and leave behind a little pocket of water vapor. And we should be able to see that. So, I took a couple videos. Now you can see it looks cool. But the problem here is this all happens within half a second, give or take. The wrench might hold the vapor a little bit longer because it's got more surface area, it's got more body, it'll retain heat better. But still this all happens too quickly. So what can we do to allow us to see the light and frost effect longer than half a second? We could try slowing the video down, but I don't have a high speed camera and that frame rate looks bad. So I took pictures. You can see the wrench here, this fork, they both are exhibiting the light and frost principle where that water vapor is sticking to the metal. This one happened way too quickly because the metal's thin. This is an example of a control test. This bolt here isn't hot. I dropped it in cold. But it is hitting the water at speed. But because it's cold, it doesn't have that protective barrier around it, and the water has immediately come into contact with and sort of bonded to the head there. You can still see that trail of air because the head of the bolt is pushing the water out of the way and allowing the air to continue down, but it doesn't have that full barrier because this wasn't hot when I dropped it in the water. Now this chain, I think this might be the coolest thing. Look at those links. I don't know if it's the surface area or the metal, but this worked better than any other object I used. If we look at the chain here, Let's get a little bit closer. You can actually see the water wrapping around the metal. In each link, that that barrier of water vapor is wrapping 360 degrees around around each piece of chain. Now one problem I had was with speed. If I wanted to drop something in the water, like this key, it went too fast. Couldn't get it on video, had to freeze it. Didn't even bother getting the key on video. Now, last thing I thought was really interesting was this coin. It was red hot when it went in the water, but it waited. It, it paused for a second before the water around it vaporized and started forming that pocket. I'm not sure why. It was the only type of metal that actually had a delay. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the science, and check back for my next project.